Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Joel Domingo and welcome to this session on screencasting your way for better grading, to better grading for your students. Uh, this is going to be a really fun session and a practical one. So let's go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining me. You see on your screen uh, an image. Uh, that's what I look like um, and yeah, this is me. I'm going to, to save bandwidth, uh, so I don't distract you, I'm going to turn off my video and we can focus on the content. So, all right, uh, I am associate professor and uh, head up the Doctor of Education in Leadership program here at CityU. And uh, a lot of my focus is on leadership, classes in leadership. I teach a great class on developing future leaders. My background has been in leadership in higher ed, nonprofit. I used to work in the governor's office. Did a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I'm really into socially transformative practices. So what is that? It's basically changing the world. That's kind of what I like doing or hope to do and help people on that journey to do that as well. So what we're talking about is screencasting and what is this whole thing called screencasting? So let me lay out a roadmap for the presentation ahead. I want to talk a little bit in terms of the importance of grading and feedback. We all know we're faculty, we understand that grading is part of our responsibilities and it's a privilege to do that. When I introduce a tool, uh, screencasting is really more of the process and the concept behind communicating better with your students and then show you an example of this in practice. Uh, so you think of it like a case study. Okay, and the whole um, uh, idea behind this presentation was that I had a lot of students because as, as you know, we grade a lot of papers. Uh, I noticed a lot of them were saying, hey, Dr. Domingo, I don't understand what you meant by this comment, or I don't understand this comment. And it, can, it reminds me of this joke. Okay, professor joke here. There's, uh, if you all remember, if you're my age, there were these things called blue books. And uh, a professor one day gave an exam to his class. And it was a blue book exam, write an essay. And there was this long rubric associated with it. And so as he was grading these blue books and the essays and the writing, out fell out a $100 bill from one of them. And a note that says, one point for each, one dollar for each point in the rubric. He thought, hmm, okay, he thought about that. The next day, after he finished grading these blue books, he handed out these grades in the blue books to the class. And the student who put that money and the note in received $60. Out fell three $20 bills and a note that says, keep the change. <laughs> All right, well, that's not how we grade here, but, you know, grading is an inev inevitable part of our uh, existence as faculty. And so here's this comic strip. It's from a comic strip called PhD Comic. It's a, it's a great comic strip. I recommend you, you take a look at it. The first panel, I made comments on the paper draft you gave me. Okay, thanks, Prof. Rev and you see all those red marks, proofers marks. Uh, we do all that too. Uh, and so the student says, uh, this is completely illegible, not understanding what's going on. And the professor says, bad handwriting is the only way people remember where doctors or instructors to. Uh, yes, yeah, so, you know, that's part of it. And uh, here's another way, again, just kind of making light of this here. This is called the toss and grade method. You got a bunch of papers in class you have to grade. You go up to the top of the stairs and you toss them all down the stairs. You look at them, spread them out, then you walk down to the bottom of the stairs and you just draw an imaginary line. Those in one line get an A, A minus, B, B, B minus, etc. cetera. So, uh, you know, yes, I'm being facetious here, but that's a way to simplify grading. I don't suggest you do that. But let's talk about the importance of quality feedback. Now, we know grading and feedback are intertwined. In fact, what we value here and, and emphasize at CityU is high quality feedback. And to think about feedback, think about the objectives of why we do it. Why do we give feedback toward our students? Well, obviously, what went well on an assessment? We tell them, hey, here's what you did well. 
We also tell them what can be improved. We also give them rationale for the grade. Imagine how frustrating it can be when a student receives a grade on their assignment and they see a good job, good job, good job, and they get a poor grade. They're going to be frustrated. Conversely, if you see critical comments from, if you're a student and you see all these critical comments on your paper and you still get an A, you can be confused. So feedback is critical and narrowing it and detailing it is so important. Think about your approaches of feedback. Consider the tone. Now, you know, when people get their papers back from me, they generally appreciate what I have to say on their papers. Uh, but think about the time it takes. When you have 30, perhaps even 40 papers you have to grade, think about the time it takes to do all that. It takes a lot of time. And I tend to be more detailed on my feedback, and I'll give you some examples here. Uh, but just, you know, balance your time. You don't want to spend your entire life just grading. <laughs> think about content versus writing. You want to aim for balance. So in my classes, uh, in the doctoral program, there's a heavy emphasis on writing, essay writing, that kind of thing, research papers. Well, I like to balance content, which is the merit of their ideas, the scholarship, the methodology of their research. But I also want them to strengthen their writing because you may have a great idea, but you may not be able to communicate that idea to a scholarly audience or even to a general audience. So you want to aim for balance on those points. Now, one way that I provided feedback in the past is what I call analog feedback. And this is a great start. What this is is a chart that I use, I use sometimes with people. You see the student's name on the top left, the assignment title. It's a research paper on leadership. And this is essentially a summary. Content, what are the things that that student did well? And there's a summary thing. On the right, you did an excellent job of synthesizing your three major leadership theories and so on and so forth. Here are some areas to improve. When you create a paper, you know, do this. You want to uh, ensure that you're giving rationale, that kind of thing. So these are summary points, kind of aligned with the rubric, just a summary, and then a quick summary. And overall, you did a great job, et cetera. Here's your final grade. That's a little bit more detailed than just kind of marking with prefers marks and then giving them a grade. All right, that's what I call analog feedback. Now, a lot of students appreciate what's known as track changes in Word. In Microsoft Word, uh, I do this a lot with my classes, is I tend to go even more detailed. And if you've never used track changes in Word before, I, I recommend this is a great thing to do because you can save all these changes and then attach them to Blackboard and they're great. So you see there's comments. I highlight some things. I say, is this a word? Uh, maybe you absorb this. The, you might not be able to see it here, but that final bottom comment says absorb in the previous paragraph. Now, the student got this and said, OK, this is really helpful, but I just don't understand some of these comments. What does absorb into previous paragraph mean? Ah, enter screencasting. This is why we're here. Let's talk about screencasting and how this method of grading can help you. Now, first thing is to understand what screencasting is and what it is not. Screencasting is a recording, it's a transmission of data uh, with an audio, kind of like a video voiceover. Uh, it is used to help students understand the intent and the thoughts behind the comments. That's really the, the, the major impact of screencasting is that that comment that I shared with you about, hey, absorb this into the previous paragraph, what does that mean? Let me talk about that. Screencasting is also a tool to enhance the quality of your instruction. I recommend you use it as a supplement, not as the replacement for your grading. Now, screencasting is not just a static shot of your student's work. It's not just a thing that just says, hey, return this, great. Here's the shot. Here's an email of the work. Um, you want to explain a little bit more. Screencasting is also not a lecture. So a lecture is kind of like you know, talking to you, talking to the camera, if you're doing a video, um, because the subject is the work. The paper is the focus. Screencasting is not podcasting, which is primarily an audio uh, mode. Okay? Now, there's a lot of options when it comes to software and applications. I've listed a few. There's literally hundreds of them. 
Jing, ScreenFlow, Camtasia, Cam Studio, Screencast-O-Matic. These are all various types of screencast applications to use. Now, you can choose any one you want, but I encourage you to think of some things like licenses and considerations. Okay? You want to think of issues like licensing, uh, meaning are they really free when they say they're free, or are they you know, free for the first X minutes and then paid after that? You also want to consider whichever screencast software you use, the support. Are they easy to learn? Is it usable? And does CityU, our institution, support them? Here are some things along those lines. Proprietary screencasts applications are usually paid. These have lots of features. These are applications like Adobe Captivate. Great tool. I've used it a little bit um, and I said, wow, some incredible features on here. However, it's paid. There's other types that are called free and open source screencasting applications. They're just that. They're free. But they have more of a learning curve. And they have so much customization that you know, the same application can be different from user to user. Cam Studio is an example of that. The happy middle that I call it is the freemium software. Uh, many of them have a lot of features. They're easy to use, but have time limits, for example, on the free version. Screencast-O-Matic is one that you can record up to 15 minutes for free. And there's some other features beyond that. But if you go over 15 minutes, well, you got to pay, and it's, it's nominal. It's like you know, two bucks a month or something. Now, uh, there's web-based ones, but do you install them? Do you have to learn some other technicalities on there? Do you need robust web software? I mean, you know, all those things. Bottom line, take a look at the CityU library site, see what e-learning, um, the library, what we support. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Screencast-O-Matic. Now, disclaimer. I don't work for Screencast-O-Matic, and they're not paying me, but I've just used it enough that I'm really happy with it. One of the things Screencast-O-Matic is, it's what I call the freemium type, that it's 15 minutes free, there's watermarks, but your screencast, I recommend you shouldn't go longer than maybe 10 minutes at most. Uh, it's easy to learn, it can store, you can edit, you can pause it, restart it, meaning that you can pause if you want to take a break and then pick up right where you left off. It's also known as a WYSIWYG, that's an old tech term. What you see is what you get. So what you see on the screen is what the students will see. There are some other advanced features on here, like captioning. Uh, you can do green screening, which means you could record it on a neutral background and pretend you're in Hawaii if you want to see that kind of thing. You know. uh, but there's also great tutorials, okay? Captioning, all that stuff. A lot of cool features on Screencast-O-Matic. CityU does support it. It's, uh, there's a page in the library to help you get started on that. Now, let me walk you through. These are screenshots. I don't have the actual screen you know, video for you on this, but let me give you an example of what and how I've used Screencast-O-Matic. This is a student's paper. In fact, this is a uh, dissertation dissemination strategy. Like before, I did track changes in Word, which I normally do, and so there's a lot of comments on the right side, there's highlights, there's um, words that are crossed out, that kind of thing. So typical grading stuff. When I use Screencast-O-Matic, what you do is you'd open up the window. Once you download the application on your computer, you just hit record a screencast. It will open up this little window, and most are like this. Notice the black and white lines around the screen. This is important because Anything within the black and white lines are going to be recorded. There's different settings where you can overlay a picture yourself. You can talk about a video of yourself and put it in there in the image, in the frame. Uh, the nice thing about this too, and many screencast applications do this, is that you can move the size of the frame. In other words, you can make it bigger, smaller, whatever, that kind of thing. All right? So that's what happens. You choose the size of the frame. That's usually the first thing you do in a screencast. Now, I recommend that if you're going to choose the size of the frame, only choose what you're going to focus on. In other words, you don't want to focus on the toolbar. You don't need to capture that. Uh, people know what the toolbar looks like. You don't need to capture the bottom of the, um, the screen. 
So I recommend try to capture just the paper itself. Keeps everything focused. Now, you hit start and there's a countdown, three, two, one, and go. You start recording. All right, <laughs> you start recording. And so when you start recording, you just talk. Try to think of yourself as sitting right next to the student and walking through your paper. So explaining what did I mean by when I said, great idea, or elaborate more. So I would walk through this student's paper and say, when you said this, what I mean and what I expect is that you should be elaborating more on the research and talking about that. So when they see the comment, it's like, oh, I understand. Using this example, and this is a real life example, I did this for a student and it changed the way that she saw grading. And from then on out, she finally understood, now I know what you mean by saying elaborate more. So it speeds up the process overall and it just, it's a better tool for communication. Now. Once you've recorded the screencast, one of the things you should do is edit and enhance it as you need. Now, you don't have to do this. Uh, I haven't done it, but you could add music to the screencast. You can have background you know, stuff going on. Trim the clip. Only trim what you need. Okay? You can save it and upload it to a format like an MP4, YouTube, Vimeo. One of the things I suggest if you're gonna record the screencast, and Screencast-O-Matic does this, it automatically saves to a file called an MP4 file. Now, that MP4 file you can actually attach on Blackboard when you grade. That is a great tool to say, hey, here's how I graded, but here's the screencast explaining how I got to that conclusion. Then you share it with the student. Direct email, uh, but better yet, attach it to the Blackboard grade um, as a file, they'll appreciate it. When they see it, they can play it. This is straight from the MP4 file, straight from Screencast-O-Matic. Many times, Screencast applications, you can hover your cursor over it. So you can move, notice this yellow little circle. On this video, if I were to play it, I can't hear now, but if I were to play it, I would just be walking through the paper page by page or item by item and just say, here's what you did great here. I highlighted this, pay attention to this, don't use this word, that kind of thing. And most of the time it takes less than five minutes just to walk through. That simple extra five minutes can make a world of difference down the road. All right, here's some final tips. Whichever screencast software you use, here's what I recommend. You should use headphones or a microphone for the best quality. Try to do your screencasting in a quiet room. Don't do it by the freeway, don't be outside. Try to limit those noise distractions. You want to record with the highest frame size possible, meaning that if your frame, remember that black and white rope around the screen, if it's too small, whenever they play it, they might not be able to see the detail of the comments. What I would do is I would zoom in on the Word document, maybe to 150%, and just make the frame big enough to see those comments. Again, this is related. Don't capture the entire screen or the toolbars. Just view what is needed to communicate the grading. Keep screencast short, especially if you're starting out with screencasting. One of the things you want to do, and I've seen this a lot with instructors are so eager to, this is such a cool tool, I want to do this. They record a 30-minute screencast, and by then the students are confused. Start with something low stakes, meaning that maybe start with a page and just say, hey, I'm trying the screencasting software out. Let me know if this helps you. Every time I've tried it and introduced it to a student, they've said, this is pretty cool. I'd like to try it again. So you know, take small steps, baby steps, if you will. The other thing, talk as you would naturally. Pretend the student is right next to you and you're going over the paper step by step. Finally, one of the most important and probably the most important thing is slow down, enunciate and be deliberate. What people tend to do, what faculty tend to do, is that they have all this screencast software and they want to keep it short, but they go over really fast and they talk all these things about the student and then they talk about how they need to write better, they need to do this, they need to do this on the research, they need to format better. And so when you're watching it, the student can just be sort of overwhelmed It'd be better just to take small chunks, encourage the student, 
Again, pretend the student is sitting right next to you and you're guiding them, you're encouraging them, you are explaining how you got to that grade. So those are some tips that I've found. Wanted to open up at this point to, you know, if you have questions, as Admiral Akbar from Star Wars would say, you know, it's a wrap or it's a trap. Uh, <laughs> thank you for listening. I want to open it up to questions at this time. If anybody from the audience has questions, please uh, feel free to ask them here on the chat bar. Okay, Gail. Thanks for your question, Gail. Are there privacy issues when saving to YouTube? Yes. Should a streaming link be used instead of making the student download an MP4 file? So one of the things, uh, yes, privacy issues. If you are going to put it to YouTube, you want to make sure it's either unlisted or private. Okay, that's a, that's a big thing. Um, make sure that you, if you are a YouTube user, uh, uh, make sure it's private or unlisted so no one can find that except the student or whoever has the link. Now, to avoid that altogether, use just an MP4 file that's an attachment. You can attach that file to a Blackboard grade. So sometimes you want to attach the file, the, uh, the graded paper, if you will, to the rubric, the grading rubric in Blackboard. You can also attach an MP4 file. It's as simple as that. Therefore, it just stays in Blackboard and uh, doesn't have to proliferate. And again, if it does, that's them proliferating it out to the world. But you've done your due diligence. Gail, I hope that answers your question. You're welcome. Thanks for asking that. All right, any more questions? I wanted to open it up to the audience, a great audience tonight. I also want to thank my uh, studio assistants, Arlene and Whitney, here in the studio today who are doing the stuff behind the scenes to make this a great presentation. Hello. Hello. So I'll just say a few more. This is just, you know, one more thing is um, screencasting is one of these tools that I'm still learning to use. I've used it probably for about a year and a half now, and it's been going pretty well. I don't use it every time. I use it strategically. I've used it a lot in dissertations especially. Students love this. Um, it helps as opposed to typing out a long explanation of what you meant in that email. Um, it's cut a lot of time out in terms of just saving time. Uh, students like it. It's also a more personalized approach, I think. Uh, sometimes when you teach online, especially when you teach online, things can get removed. You don't feel you're a part of that. Having a screencast there, and if you want, you can even attach a, a, a small video of yourself doing the screencast, walking through. People feel that connection. And, uh, you know, believe me, it does make a huge difference uh, to the student experience. And that's what we're all after here at CityU. So if there are no more questions, what I'm going to do is end this, uh, cue the music, and thank you so much for coming to this presentation. I hope you have enjoyed this. There will be a survey link coming out soon. Please review that with all fives. Uh, no. <laughs> Please uh, review that. Give me anything. Um, hey, keep the conversation going, all right? Uh, Share with each other, and uh, as Ron Burgundy would say, you stay classy, San Diego. Have a good night. And uh, enjoy the next break till the next session. <laughs>